This is about as sturdy as the planes I used to fly. You used to fly? Yes, little one, a lifetime ago. It was back in the Great War. Wow, really? I was much like you when I was young. My head always in the clouds, dreaming of soaring among them. I used to run through the fields barefoot and dream I was flying through those wisps so white. Ever since a small plane had landed near our village in Russia. When I was 15, I even learned gliding without telling my parents. Not that that is a good thing, keeping secrets from your parents. But I was so headstrong, I wanted to learn so bad. I had to do whatever it took. Were your parents mad? Of course they were. A young lady going off to learn to fly was unheard of. A young lady was supposed to find a husband and have children. Ugh. Yes, that is how I felt as well. I didn't give up. By the time I was 16, I had flown solo and even made my first parachute jump. That must have been very scary. Yes, it was, but I was determined. It was all I dreamed of. I had been rejecting to begin with, but I kept at it. You should never give up a dream. What happened after you did learn how to fly? It was a time of great turmoil then. The Germans had been invading countries in Eurasia and Russia was no exception. So I did what any good Russian would do. I volunteered to fly, to fight from my homeland. You see, my brother had been killed, my home captured. I did what I had to do. It was not easy, but I was not alone. There were many women who felt the same way, and our men were already fighting. But it was not enough. Of course, the men did not see it the same way. We traveled by train to a small town north of Stalingrad, called Engels. We were excited. It would be a whole new life for us. Of course, the men on the train mocked us, but we didn't care. We would show them. It only got worse when we arrived and they cut our hair <laughs> and made us wear men's uniforms. And those shoes. They were huge, like, uh, how do you say, the funny ones with the makeup and big shoes. Clowns? Yes, that is it, clowns. They were more of a hazard to us than the enemy. Did the men stop? Ah, no, but our commander started moving the men out of our units and we became all females. It was for the best. We wouldn't want them feeling too badly when we showed how much better we were. Now would we? No. <laughs> what happened next? Mm -hmm. 
Well, we trained and trained and trained. Training was soon done and after that I was sent home to fight in my childhood home region of the Donetsk coal fields. It was during this time that I led a group of fighters. Did it get better then? You were near home and the men had been removed from your units. Oh no, they gave us the slowest planes, the PO2S. They could only carry two bombs at most, and we couldn't even wear parachutes for the weight would have been too much. We were tested day in and day out. But we proved that we were good soldiers, good pilots, and uh, we were feared by the enemy. You see, our planes were so slow that the enemy planes would stall out at our speeds. But we used that. We would make our planes dance through the skies. And we would fly under the cover of darkness. We flew in groups of three. Two would distract our enemies and the third would glide in and drop their bombs. And then we would rotate who was dropping and who was distracting. The men did not last as long as we did. They flew fewer missions and were released from their obligations sooner. But our women flew over 23,000 sorties and we lost 30 pilots. Our planes were only made of canvas and plywood, about as flimsy as this toy of yours. When we would glide in, the wind would howl well and knock through the wires and wood of the planes, making it sound like brooms clashing. That is why the Germans called us Nachthexen, night witches. They were so afraid of us that anyone who was able to shoot one of our planes down was given the Iron Cross. Wow, did they? Were the men feared as much? Some did. They were always trying new ways to bring us down. One particular flight, I actually had 42 bullet holes in my plane and person, but it did not stop us. Were you ever shot down? Yes, I was. And it was not such a bad thing. I had crashed landed in Northern Caucasus, where I managed to join up with a retreating Soviet Union column. Command 
there was a blizzard. We could not see, we were frozen, and there was two planes. It was a horrible day, but it was a horrible winter in general that year. There was even a time where we had to lie on the wings to keep the planes from being damaged in the heavy winds. We looked like piles of snow on the wings. There was an injured pilot. His head was covered in bandages. But he made me laugh. He kept my spirits up even though he was injured. I did not forget him through the war and managed to find him again and again. My Simeon. We were married and never parted again until he went home. Chaim? Yes, he died in 1990. But he is home, flying in the skies again. I see him from time to time in the clouds. I think I will join him and my comrades soon. That is sad. I have done my part for this world and I long to see them again. Besides, it is your time now. Go and have your adventures and remember, never regret. I will. Thank you for telling me your stories. That's her, Mum. That's who, honey? The woman that I met and talked with in the park. That is her picture, there, in the paper. This is the woman? Wow. I guess you did have an exciting day that day. It says that she was a hero during World War II. She sounds like she was an amazing woman. She was, Mum, and she said she was going home soon, that she wanted to. I guess she got her wish. It is still sad. Yes, it is. But she had an exciting life, honey. Yeah, she did. Just like I'm going to have. 